Good morning, Mount Calvary. How's everyone doing today? I hope you're well. Happy New Year. We love you. We miss you. We're ready for a new beginning, I know all. But right now, we're going to worship our Lord and Savior. And you know that He's our friend and we're His. And we're just going to get up out of our seats, our couches, and worship. Come on with me. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are mindful of me, how you love me? It's amazing. You that you hear me when I call when I call is it true that is it true that you are thinking of me how, how you love me it's amazing it's amazing I am a friend I am a friend of God
Hallelujah. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. Hallelujah. 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 Only my friend would know my name. Only my friends know my situations. Only my friends know my broken pieces. Only my friends know my struggles. And I'm glad to call Jesus my friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to our God in prayer. He's our friend. Hallelujah. You know my name. You know my name. You Jesus, you 
is within me. No giant can defeat me, cause you hold my hand. No battle can stop me. No battle, no battle can turn me. me. No mountain, no mountain can, stop can stop me. Cause you hold, you hold my hand. I walk in, I walk in, in your victory. In your cause your power no lives. Power power lives within me. a holy God, a righteous God, a sovereign God. Here I am to worship and here I am to bow down and here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely all together so worthy and all together wonderful to me sing that with me y'all here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my Take a second and just worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are welcome. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. One more time here. Here I am to worship. Here I Here 
here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am. Here I am to bow to a holy God. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together. You're all together. You're all together. Lord. All together. All to Hey, Mount Calvary, Pastor Steve here. Listen, I pray that you were encouraged in our time of worship. Listen, we're going to go ahead and go into the word of the Lord. Listen, happy new year to everyone. This is the first Sunday in the new year. Listen, praise God, we made it. And we are excited for the fact that God has brought us into 2021. But we're going to go ahead and jump into the word of the Lord. We're still in the series on give thanks because there's still a whole lot that we can give thanks about. So we're going to Luke chapter 22, and we're going to read verses 14 through 20. Luke chapter 22, reading verses 14 through 20. And it reads as follows. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then finally, verse 20. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. May we bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you, O Lord, for allowing us to make it into a new year. We celebrate you and we magnify you. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. Now, Father, as we take this time to go into your word, we pray that you will open our hearts and our minds. Help us to hear what your word is saying to us. We thank you and we bless you. Speak to me and through me. Let your people, O oh Lord, not hear me, but you who dwell within me, Holy Spirit. We thank you right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So as I said a moment ago, we're still in our current sermon series entitled Give Thanks. And the title for this message is Jesus Gives Thanks. And so we've been in this series now for a couple of months uh, talking about the importance of giving thanks and the importance of being grateful. Because even in the midst of problems and even in the midst of a pandemic, there's still things that we are able to be thankful about. We must continually remind ourselves of the importance in, of having an attitude of gratitude. Even if you didn't get everything you wanted in 2020 or you didn't see all the people you wanted to see in 2020, there's still some things to be thankful for and to give God thanks about. Can I tell you, no matter what goes on in your life, we should be giving God thanks because he has been good to us. And this morning, we turn our attention to a time when Jesus gave thanks. Uh, we need to understand that Jesus didn't give thanks sparingly. No, he gave thanks continually. He always thanked the Father for what he was doing in his life. He, he gave the Father thanks on a continual 
basis. How do I know that? Here's a few scriptures for you. First, John chapter 6, verse 11. When Jesus fed the 5,000, he gave thanks. In John chapter 11, verse uh, 41, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he gave the Father thanks. In Luke chapter 10, verse 21, when the 70 disciples were sent out and they came back from doing ministry, Jesus gave thanks to the Father. Jesus was thankful and grateful in his heart for what the Father was doing in him and through him. Can I tell you that we need to be just like Jesus? We need to be thankful and grateful for what God is doing to us and through us even in this time. Uh, the place where we're going to look at this morning, the occasion we're going to look at this morning where Jesus gives thanks is found in Luke 22. When Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper, which we know as communion. Uh, chapter 22 occurs during the, the final week of Jesus's ministry on earth. It, it occurs during the Passover. The Passover was a time when the Jewish people would come and celebrate their liberation from slavery. It's when God delivered them out of bondage in Egypt and then instructed them on the importance or rather instructed them to kill a lamb and to place the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and then God sent the death angel to Egypt and when he got to Egypt wherever he saw the blood of the lamb covered the death angel passed over that house there's a sermon right there I can't go into it because we only got a little bit of time but but that's hence the word Passover that the death angel passed over their house so therefore, killing all the firstborn sons in Egypt and God allowed them to come out, Israel, to come out of bondage. So every year they would come together and celebrate the fact that God freed their ancestors from bondage. And in our text, it's the time of Passover. Jesus has already sent Peter and John to secure a location for the Passover meal. Uh, Jesus told them about a man who would allow them to use his upper room so that they could be able to have the meal. And it is in the upper room where we pick up our reading that we read this morning in verses 14 through 20. Uh, Dr. Luke, he, he informs us of, of what happens in the upper room during the Passover meal. Now understand, all four of the Gospels talk about the Passover meal. Some writers give less detail while others give more. Such as in Matthew 26 and Mark chapter 14, uh, they give us few details, uh, only focusing on when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. But when you turn to the Gospel of John, John gives us five chapters about what happened during the Passover meal. It's chapters 13 through 17. But what's interesting, in all five of those chapters, the Apostle John does not mention the Lord's Supper. But Luke, he gives us more detail than Matthew and Mark concerning the Lord's Supper, about Jesus instituting communion. The Lord's Supper is a topic, please hear me church, it is a topic that we must talk about. It's a topic that we must teach about because it is something that we do on a regular basis, such as what we're going to do today after the sermon. It's something we do on a regular basis, and it is something that Jesus commands us to do as his followers so that we can declare who he is and what he's done. When Jesus and the twelve arrive at the upper room, Jesus begins to talk with them. And this Passover now is different from the other Passovers that they had participated in with Jesus. This would be Jesus' final Passover. His final Passover with the twelve. It is a Passover right before his death on the cross. 
Matter of fact, Jesus tells them in verse 15, he says, with, with fervent desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus is basically saying, listen, I've been waiting for this moment. I've been anticipating this moment to spend with you because this moment is different from the other moments. This moment is different from the other Passovers. And the reason why is this is the Passover right before I suffer. His suffering speaks to him giving up his life for humanity. It speaks of Jesus being the Lamb of God, sacrificing himself for the world. Just like the, the Lamb that was sacrificed by the Hebrews, and, and the blood was covered and put on the doorpost, and the death angel passed over, Jesus is our Lamb of God, who sacrificed himself on the cross so that we can be saved from the wrath of God too. He, he lets the, the 12 know that this will be the last time he participates in the Passover celebration. He says the next time he, he participates in this, in this feast, it will be in the kingdom of God. At, he's speaking of the, 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 the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's over in, in Revelations 19, verses 7 through 9. It's where we, the church, will celebrate with Jesus, the Lamb of God, as he begins his millennial reign on earth. Luke, he, he narrates for us three times when Jesus gives thanks during the Passover celebration. It's in verse 17. Verse 17, he says, it says he took the cup and he gave thanks. In verse 19, he took the bread and gave thanks. And then in verse 20, which is said a little differently, but it means the same thing. It says, likewise, he also took the cup. Likewise, meaning he also gave thanks for the cup. We, we see Jesus being thankful for a couple things in the text. First, he's, he's thankful for the, the physical items that are there. The cup and the bread. I got a question for you. Are you thankful for the physical things in your life? Are you thankful for the things that God has given you in your life? And listen, I'm not just talking about the big stuff. I'm not just talking about a, a house or, or a car or savings or a job. I'm talking about the necessities of life. Are you thankful for food? Are you thankful for water? I know sometimes we can take that stuff for granted. But listen, are you thankful that you got food on your table, food in your refrigerator, that you got clean water to drink, the necessities of life? Are you thankful for having clothes on your back? We can take that for granted because many of us have closets full of clothes and closets full of shoes. Are you thankful for your clothes and your shoes? Are you thankful for your, for your health? Uh, listen, you can have all the money in the world, all the clothes in the world, all the shoes and cars, but if you don't have your health, all that stuff is meaningless. The cup and the bread can be seen as the necessities of life. Cup, speaking of something to drink. Bread, something to eat. Jesus was excited about the necessities and thankful for the necessities of life. Sometimes we can get so bogged down and so excited about the big stuff, the, the big blessings that we can forget to thank God for the little blessings, which are really big blessings when you think about it. Breathing is a big deal. Listen, when you can't breathe, it don't matter what you got on. It don't matter what folks driving. You want to make sure you can breathe. Mobility is a big deal. Being able to grab something with your hands, walk down the street, speak to people, wave to people. Those are big deals, and we should thank God for them. Food and shelter and water. 
thanking God for the necessities of life. Jesus was grateful for the necessities. And he expressed his gratitude to the Father. And second, Jesus gave thanks because of what the items symbolized. The unleavened bread that was at the table was once associated with Israel's past of being delivered out of Egypt. But it turned into the symbol of Jesus' sacrifice. Verse 19 says, this is Jesus talking. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The bread now symbolizes Jesus giving all of himself for us. Him giving up everything for us. Not part of himself, but all of himself. Listen, aren't you glad that Jesus gave it all up for us? He, he gave up everything for us. He sacrificed his, him whole, his whole self for us. But you know, if we're glad that he didn't hold anything back when it came to saving our lives... Why are we so willing to hold stuff back when it comes to living for him? If he's willing to give up everything for us, why aren't we willing to give up everything for him? Listen, Jesus just doesn't want part of our lives. He wants all of our lives. Many of us, we, 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 we can give up some stuff, but we want to hold on to other stuff. Folks can give up lying, but then they want to hold on to pride. They, they want to give up drugs, but still hold on to greed. Give up sex, but hold on to lust. Give up Sunday, but hold on to Monday through Saturday. He doesn't just want part of us. He wants all of us. He wants us to surrender everything over to him. The cup symbolizes the, the shed blood of Jesus. The, 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 the Lamb of God, which, which allows humanity to enter into the new covenant or new relationship with God. That, that's why Jesus says in verse number 20 in the text, he says, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Israel's covenant was, was instituted with blood as well. But, but, but their covenant was consistent with the fact that they had to go in and kill a lamb every year so that they can be able to make sure that their sins are forgiven yearly. In the same way, but in a greater way, Jesus shed blood also enables us to enter into a covenant with God. But it's not the old covenant, it's the new covenant. And this covenant isn't based on animal sacrifices. It's not based on the, the blood of animals, but on the sacrifice and blood of Jesus. As I said, Israel had to go in yearly to get their sins forgiven with a blood sacrifice, killing of a lamb. But praise God, Jesus did it once. He sacrificed himself once. And because he did it one time, our sins are forever forgiven. Listen, listen, I know there's not a whole lot of talk about the blood of Jesus anymore. But can I tell you, the blood still works. The, the blood still has power. The blood still is the payment for sin. Blood is the still the, the, the power to cleanse sinners and make them saints before God. It's his blood. His blood cleanses a sin sick soul and makes us whole. It's his blood. It's his blood. It's so powerful. It still turns sin, which is dark as scarlet, into white as snow, making us pure before God. It's his blood. It's by the blood of Jesus that people can move from sinner to saint. From hell-bound to heaven-bound. From alien to citizen. From stranger to joint heirs with Christ. It's by the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. It was his blood that cleansed me. 
it was his blood that made me whole. Listen, without the blood of Jesus, my sins still remain and I am destined to hell without God. Thank God for the blood. Listen, if Jesus can give thanks for the cup and the bread, why can't we? Listen, I understand that the Lord's Supper is a serious moment. It's a serious moment because we should examine ourselves, the Apostle Paul tells us. We are to examine ourselves to make sure that we haven't sinned against God. But it's also a time where we are to give thanks to God for the bread and for the cup. That we should celebrate what Jesus has done on our behalf. Where we should be thankful and grateful for what God has done for us. He has provided for us. He's provided for our necessities, our daily needs. But listen, he just didn't stop at our daily needs. He also met our spiritual needs. And we should be thankful and grateful for that. Listen, church, we have to give thanks to God for the bread and the cup because Jesus, God's son, didn't hold anything back from us. He didn't hold anything back when it came to saving us. So we should thank God because Jesus, the Lamb of God, shed his blood for our sins. And now we can spend eternity with God. We should thank God for the bread and for the cup. Listen, I, I know the Lord's Supper is a time of reverence and reflection. But never forget, it is also a time of celebration and giving of thanks. The Lord's Supper isn't just some ritual we do to fill up time on the first Sunday. No, it is to remind us to give thanks to God for everything he has provided for us physically and spiritually. Every time we come to the Lord's table, every time we take of the bread and of the cup, verse 19 says we do this in remembrance of him. Remembering his sacrifice. Remembering his suffering. Remembering that he allowed us to enter into a new covenant with God through his blood. Remembering everything he's done for us. Remembering how he gave up everything for us. Remembering what he's still doing for us. What he will do for us. Listen, not, not only is communion a time to remember what Jesus has done, Communion is also a memorial for what he has done for us. It's a, it's a sign, a tribute that shows the world and reminds the church that Jesus gave his life for us. He gave up everything for us so that we can be able to escape the wrath of God because he loved us and obeyed the Father for us. It's a memorial to tell the world that the Lord Jesus Christ did this for us and for them. Listen, let us remember the Lord's Supper is a time to be grateful. It's a time to give thanks, to express our gratitude before the Lord. Now, as I said earlier, the Passover in the text where Jesus, he instituted the Lord's Supper. When Jesus had this conversation with the twelve, it would have caused them to do two things. One, it would have caused them to reflect on the past, what God did in Egypt delivering their ancestors. But it was also now to have them to imagine the future about what's about to happen in the future. It will cause them to look back, but also look forward to Jesus' suffering. Look forward to him dying on the cross. 
and for him coming back to life three days later. But listen, for us, when we look at the Lord's Supper, yeah, we can see the Passover in it, but we don't have to go all the way back to the Passover. Well, we need to stop at Jesus. We need to look back when we take communion, look back to what Jesus did on that cross over 2,000 years ago. No, he didn't deliver us from Egypt. No, he delivered us from the bondage of sin and death. And then at the same time, it requires us to look forward. We are to be looking forward. We are to do this until he returns. Looking forward to the fact that one day we will be united with him for eternity. And then we will feast with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Listen, church, Mount Calvary, let us remember to give thanks. In a moment, we're about to have communion. Let us remember what communion is all about. That we will forever give God thanks. And we should forever express our gratitude for Jesus' suffering, for his sacrifice, for God's salvation, and for his sanctification. Listen, during communion church, yes, let us reflect, let us remember, but let us also thank God. And listen, if you've been listening to this sermon and Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, today he can be. Today he can be your Savior. Today you can believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus died on your behalf, that he shed his blood for your sins. He was buried and he came back to life three days later. Today, you can believe that message and you can join with us in giving thanks to God. Listen, today, you can be in, in anticipation of being a part of the marriage supper of the Lamb. All you got to do is believe that message I just told you, the gospel, that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried and he came back to life three days later. Repent of your sins. Just ask God to forgive you and then make Jesus the Lord of your life. Confess him as your Lord. Turn your life over to Jesus. And salvation will be yours. Eternal life will be yours. And listen, you can give thanks with us for what Jesus has done for us. So listen, if you want to give your life to the Lord, I just ask you say a prayer with me. Let us bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you sent Jesus. I believed he died on the cross. I believe he came back to life three days later. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior. Now, Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Help us, O oh Lord, to remember the importance of communion. Help us, O oh Lord, to be grateful and thankful for what Jesus has done for us over 2,000 years ago. Father, we've entered into a new year. Help us to move forward with grateful hearts and thankful hearts to you and to your Son for what he has done for us. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Listen, if you said that prayer with me, giving your life to the Lord, we ask you please just go ahead and let us know that you've done that on our connection card. If you need prayer for anything at all, we would love to pray for you. Please reach out to us. Uh, send us an email or put it on the, the connection card. We are ready to pray with you and for you for whatever you're going through in life. And listen, Mount Calvary, thank you so much 
for your giving of tithes and offerings to the Lord. Thank you for being generous. Thank you for being faithful to the Lord and giving unto him so that we can be faithful and generous with what God has given us as a corporate body. Listen, as you already know, there's, there's three ways to be able to give. You can give through GiveLify or PayPal on our website or mail your tithes and your offerings in. Now listen, we're going to go ahead and, and get ready so that we can have communion. All right. Hello, hello, hello. You can come on in. Yeah, this is Donna. <laughs> you need some help? Okay. Hey, listen, Mount Calvary, I pray that you are ready for communion. I pray you have your, your bread and some juice, the cup, so that we can participate in communion together. Listen, we've already talked about the importance of communion, about, about the day when Jesus took his, his 12 disciples into the upper room and he instituted what we are about to do. Listen, as we think about communion, not only should, as, as, as we said before, reflect, but let us give thanks for what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ. The, the, the bread representing the, the body of Jesus Christ that was beaten and bruised on Calvary. As the scripture says, as he blessed the bread and gave thanks for it, let us too also give thanks while we eat together. Let us eat. Next, Jesus took the cup. The cup represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Just as he blessed the bread, he also blessed the cup. And this morning, let us to be thankful for the cup. As they drank together, let us too also drink together. Listen, Mount Calvary, I pray that you were encouraged during this time of communion. And let us continue in this, in this mindset of being grateful and thankful to God. For all that he has done for us. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time. Thank you, O Lord, for allowing us to be able to worship you in this way. Thank you for the privilege of allowing us to partake in the bread and the cup. And Father, I do pray that you bless each and every family, O Lord who gave in tithes and offering unto you, O Father. Now, Father, we pray that you bless us during this week. Keep us safe and without harm. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, Mount Calvary, God bless you. God keep you. Bye now.